On January 8, 2053, following the end of nearly three decades of constant war against the Alien Covenant, the unified Earth government was formally restored as the chief executive body of human civilization. The transfer of power marked an end to the emergency military government that had seen mankind through its war with the Covenant and the restoration of civilian authority. The decision to turn the fate of mankind over to a military junta was not always a popular one and made only in the gravest of circumstances. Yet there is little doubt that humanity would not have survived its war with the Covenant if not for the United Nations Space Command, or the UNSC. First and foremost a military apparatus, the UNSC is administered by High Command, or HICOM, with regional responsibility delegated and exercised through various central commands. The UNSC maintains hundreds of administrative and bureaucratic offices, ranging from everything from UNSC astrophysics to the UNSC Symphony Orchestra. The primary branches of service, however, are the UNSC Army, responsible for sustained planet-based warfare, the UNSC Air Force, which provides both atmospheric and orbital support, the UNSC Navy, which conducts spaceborne operations, and the UNSC Marine Corps, which acts as a rapid reaction force. Each branch of the UNSC Defense Forces is itself comprised of numerous component and support services. Of particular note is the Office of Naval Intelligence, which was known to operate its own fleet of covert warships, the orbital drop shock troopers, which deployed directly from orbit in specialized drop pods, and the Spartan Branch, which exclusively utilized members of the Spartan 3 and Spartan 4 Super Soldier programs to conduct high-risk special warfare operations. The ubiquitous nature of the UNSC within human society, even before the outbreak of war with the Covenant, made the organization at times deeply unpopular within civilian circles, leading to allegations of unchecked militarism and warmongering. Yet its role in the founding of modern human civilization cannot be overstated, and is the primary reason for its prominence in human affairs. The origins of the UNSC can be traced back to the last major conflicts on Earth, during which resurgent communist and fascist elements attempted to resist the shift of political power from various national governments of Earth to a centralized UN authority. In a series of campaigns fought across the South American rainforest, Mars, and the Jovian moons, UN forces achieved many stunning victories, lending support to the adoption of a unified government structure. By the end of the war, the United Nations Space Command had emerged as the principal military, exploratory, and scientific agency of the nascent unified Earth government. With the development of the Shaw Fujikawa slip space drive, the UNSC began deploying vast numbers of colony ships to the nearest star systems and planets, giving rise to the inner colonies of humanity. By 2490, over 800 worlds in the Orion Arm had been colonized, and the inner colonies, now major political and economic strongholds, began to increasingly rely on the developing outer colonies for raw materials. The vast economic inequality between the inner and outer colonies became a growing source of tension and rivalry, and public support for the UNSC began to slowly dwindle across the edge of frontier space. During this time, the inner colony world of Reach, strategically located in close proximity to the solar system, grew to become the site of the UNSC's primary fleet yard as well as various training academies and the headquarters of numerous UNSC branches and organizations. By 2494, the deteriorating situation across the outer colonies gave rise to an insurrectionist movement, with acts of terrorism, piracy, and open rebellion occurring across the frontiers of human space. Fearing the outbreak of a massive civil war across Earth's colonies, the UNSC initiated the Spartan program, a secret project tasked with creating elite soldiers through mechanical and biological augmentation. As the UNSC prepared to deal with the prospect of a devastating civil war, this threat was preempted by the arrival of the Alien Covenant, a theocratic hegemony who viewed humanity as an affront to their religion. Sweeping through the outer colonies, the Covenant enacted a policy of deliberate and systematic genocide against the human race, bombarding human-occupied worlds with powerful plasma weaponry, 
a practice known as glassing. The Covenant's enormous technological advantage gave them almost total supremacy in space-based engagements, and the UNSC was often only able to achieve victory using overwhelming numbers or asymmetrical strategies. While glassing was the primary doctrine utilized by the Covenant, on worlds containing ancient alien relics critical to their religion, the Covenant were repeatedly forced to deploy ground forces, neutralizing many of their advantages and giving the UNSC a more level playing field. On Harvest, Arcadia, Jericho, and dozens of other human colonies, the UNSC fought a tenacious defense, delaying the Covenant advance for years until these planets too were finally glassed. By 2535, most of the outer colonies had been destroyed. Food shortages, riots, and open rebellions permeated the remainder of human space, forcing the UNSC to subsume the last remaining civilian authority, transforming the UNSC into an emergency military government. For decades, the Covenant ravaged through the inner colonies, inflicting devastating losses and crippling the UNSC's ability to continue the war. In desperation, the UNSC began considering a number of high-risk operations, including attempting to capture a member of the Covenant's leadership cast, ransoming its life in exchange for a truce. The arrival of the Covenant over the fortress world of Reach interrupted these plans, and the loss of the planet was considered by many as a prelude to the eventual total capitulation of humanity. With the location of Earth believed to have been compromised and the arrival of the Covenant in the solar system likely imminent, evacuation procedures began in preparation for what would likely be the final battles of the war. In the wake of these calamitous losses, an unexpected victory occurred on an artificial ring world discovered by the sole surviving ship from the Fall of Reach, the light cruiser Pillar of Autumn. Among the many revelations uncovered on this halo was the existence of a parasitic organism known as the Flood. Directed by a near-omniscient intelligence, the Flood managed to spread across High Charity, an enormous planetoid space station that served as the capital of the Covenant and their most holy city. Already caught in the midst of a developing civil war with the death of most of their upper leadership, the internal structure of the Covenant was fractured, with various secessionist groups aligning themselves with the UNSC. In a series of frantic battles across Earth and additional Halo ring worlds, both the Flood and the Covenant leadership were finally defeated, bringing an end to the most destructive conflict in galactic history and preventing the activation of the Halo Array, revealed to be a superweapon of galactic scale. The UNSC had fought for humanity's right to exist, and its victory brought about a new era in the galaxy. It is now a time of restoration, as Earth's shattered colonies are restored and resettled. The Covenant, while broken, remains a formidable power, and the UNSC must contend with several rival factions in the place of a single united empire. With new technologies, new ships, and new weapons, the UNSC is once more venturing out into the darkest corners of the universe. But if there is one indomitable truth that humanity has learned, it is that the galaxy has no shortage of mysteries, and some are best left undisturbed. The Templin Institute investigates nations, organizations, and factions from alternate worlds and realities. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Do you have a suggestion for a future episode? Let us know by leaving a comment.